Or number five finds Wes Ketchum in Austria. Wes is uh, the uh, local Chicago weasel. We'll talk about him a lot. In England, we have another uh, former weasel, George Zhang, coming to us now. Uh, he's back in Illinois. Is that right? All right. Probably uh, pandemic related there. Um, he is uh, he's, uh, in college at Georgetown University. So uh, although he might have graduated by now, I've known him long enough. <laughs> uh, France, I, I knew him. Uh, I met him when he was in high school. And I guess it's been about four years now. Uh, France, we have Maxim Popov, uh, finally not playing Russia. Maxim, well done. In Germany, we have Jonathan Frank coming to us from Baltimore, Maryland. In Italy, we've got Natty Schaefer coming to us from Salt Lake City. In Russia, Morgante Pell, a first-round board topper playing out of Vermont. And in Turkey, we have Dave Roberts from Snohomish. Snohomish. Yes, got it right. All right, um, quick read on this board, Siobhan. What stands out to you? Um, the players that I know fairly well are Wes and George, um, so the two weasels. Um, I've seen a lot from Jonathan Frank, Natty Schaefer, Maxim Popov, Morgante Pell. Dave Roberts is fairly new to me as of today. So, All right. And Adam, what stands out to you here? You know, there's a lot of these players I don't know personally, but I've seen them uh, through doing various streams. And this is a solid, solid board. Yep. These are good players. Um and, um, you know, we have Magante, who is the current tournament leader. Um, and, and we have some other folks who are just really nice, solid players. So um, excited to see how it goes. Yeah, you can see from the rankings here, we've got three players in the top 30 from uh, from the DBNI rankings. And two of the other players are uh, Wes Ketchum, who is leading the Windy City Weasels uh, League currently. And Morgante Pell, which is um, uh, who is a board topper, and we've seen him uh, do some good things on on different broadcasts. So uh, definitely an exciting uh, exciting board here. So let us, without further ado, move to the map. And um, all right, let's uh, Siobhan. We're gonna uh, dive you right back into the fray. You'll be the primary analyst on uh, on 1901, and tell us what uh, what you see. All right, let's go. Uh, finally, we see a bounce in Galicia because they're doing what for me as a face to face player is the reasonable thing and just bouncing. Bounce in the Black Sea, fairly standard. Turkey, all around, fairly standard. Um, Italy, standard. Germany makes the bounce in Tyrolia, doesn't always sniff out the Italian wants to go there. I appreciate that. And France supports themselves to Burgundy and gets into the channel. Um, but England does pull down to Wales which you don't often see with the move to North and Norwegian. So interesting. All right, Adam, uh, what, uh, what else do you think needs a little bit of uh, discussion? I don't recall any games where somebody didn't move to the channel. Actually, this is a pretty, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, very, a lot of, a lot of provocative openings. Um, you, you know, Liverpool to Wales is, unusual um uh, you know i it, i don't have any issues with it i mean it, it limits what you can do with your fleets but on the other hand it, it does send a message to france saying mm -hmm. nope you're not you're not doing anything you went to english channel nothing happening so yeah um, no i don't hate it at all no i'm good with it yeah combined with the move liverpool, liverpool to wales without uh london's english channel is uh, uh is definitely interesting uh okay let's push ahead here and see what uh uh, see how things evolve in fall of 1901. Siobhan, tell us about it. <laughs> oh, wow. Did not see that coming. Have you guys ever seen this? No. <laughs> oh, ever. My, I, I, I just want to take a moment to just bathe in France went to the channel and we get to complain about that. And George is like, yeah, I kind of saw it coming. That's why I went to Wales and convoy to Belgium. Like, do, we have to believe this was planned from moment one, right? It has to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's like, gorgeous, especially right? with the move of north to Holland. 100%. <laughs> like, that is... I just want to say, I this is like... This is the birth of a new, uh, a new form of the EF. Um, this is I a way to do it. an EF that is... That is unusual and uh, hard to see coming if you're in Germany, I think. But it works so well. And Adam, next time we play together and Eddie's in Germany and we're in England and France, let's do this. Yeah, that way you can go to London, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a danger, but, you know, the, wow. the, you, you, see, like, you see funky openings with other other alliances like RT and uh, 
this is a funky opening. I, wow. It's kind of brilliant. Yeah. Um, it, wow. Yeah. Prop, props to George and Maxim. Uh, this might be worth uh, an interview on the post on the wrap up show, tournament wrap up show. I, I'm definitely going to need an interview with the two of them about this. <laughs> um elsewhere on the board germany's got some problems um as sort of discussed briefly there did let russia into sweden we'll see if that buys him a friend um everything else fairly standard austria takes greece uh russia takes romania and we see the convoy to tunis and the move to tuscany which is the hey i'm not being threatening to anyone out of venice not in piedmont not in the tyrolia all right and adam uh what else do you want to draw our attention to um, no, I, I mean, I don't like the move to Tuscany, you know, that's sort of like, uh, okay, you're in Tuscany, we don't need to talk to you, you know, now if you're in Tyrolia, then now people want to talk to you. So uh, I just, I just don't like it from a diplomatic standpoint, it doesn't give you options, and it makes you very uninteresting to other people. Um, I, I understand you don't want to upset anybody, but, you know, it's diplomacy, you're going to upset somebody. <laughs> All right, let's push ahead and see how things go. Uh, winter builds. We've got uh, England doing really EF-friendly stuff, and we have France uh, also doing an EF-friendly thing, uh, putting out an army in Paris. And, uh, you know, uh, you could have made an argument, actually, that Marseille would have been a little bit more EF-friendly, um, but who cares <laughs> at this point, right? <laughs> You've got the English Channel, and England is happy because they got a second build. Uh, Germany interestingly puts down a fleet this is actually a bit surprising i think if you're germany you probably want to be trying to curry favor with uh with with russia here and mm -hmm. also trying to shore up your defenses uh, and your home centers and fleet berlin does neither of those things uh elsewhere we've got an uh, italian fleet in naples unsurprising we've got two austrian armies unsurprising and a uh, fleet in smyrna turkish fleet in smyrna also unsurprising all right, let's push ahead. Spring what? 19. Oh, sorry, you got some. Oh, I, I was just going to ask, what are the odds that, um, okay, this is even weirder than what I was just about to suggest. <laughs> no. Hear it. Go All right, it. well, Ad, Adam, you're on You're on tap here. So. Right, I, I was going to ask, what are the odds that uh, English Channel convoys the, the London army down? But this is much weirder. Um, <laughs> and... And I'm not, I'm not even quite sure why you do this, considering Edinburgh held, but um, Edinburgh I supported it. I sorry, Edinburgh <laughs> supported it. I, I, but hey, it's fun. So why the hell not, right? And I think if you've got two people, I think Maxim didn't have a good round one game, and if if he's and George didn't play, and so if they're both like, let's just do something super weird and super fun, then props to them for, for doing that and, and seeing how it plays out. Um, oh, um, my goodness. You know, I, I, you know, but that's, that's just weird. Right? <laughs> I um, mean, from, a, from George's perspective, is, is there any benefit to getting that French fleet out of the English channel? I mean, no. it, now bordering no. four of your dots. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, why do you why do you want to do that rather than have him support you out or just go to Mao so we can take Portugal? I mean, that's just mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But, I think but, you I think you want the fleet out of the English Channel. You just don't want it in North <laughs> or, I, or Irish. Place is North, yeah. It. I but I don't know. But there's I think there's an argument that now it's it's in front of your units, so it's no longer behind your units. It can't go to Irish Sea now. It can't spring an attack. Uh, but. Sure. I, yeah, I, I, they're just having fun. I think they're just having fun. I mean, yeah. I really like there's no there's no reason to do that now. That North Sea fleet is probably going to convoy the English army in London somewhere, <laughs> right into Denmark. Hundred so, percent, it's going to Denmark with <laughs> Elgin support. <laughs> so, I, yeah, and well, here you see why uh, why Marseille would have been a better build here because you can go to Piedmont and try to get around. Although then you, you know you risk uh, pissing Italy off. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, Siobhan, what else do you want to draw our attention to? Um, you know, you've got some standard scuffling in the East that I don't think I need to spend a ton of time on unless you all see something specific I'm missing. Um, Turkey shifting his fleets around friendly with Russia. The only big question I have is why did Sweden hold instead of supporting St. Pete to Norway? Yeah. Yeah, you have to figure that was deliberate, but uh, not exactly sure what the yeah what the intention there is okay let's push ahead here i think it, i think it may be you don't want the retreat to barons right and so you want to make that order yeah okay that's fair 
Yeah, especially. Yeah, we saw that in the previous turn. Um, right, you're kind, you're kind of in game. case Norway supports Denmark to Sweden for the spring, but you don't mm-hmm. want to warm retreating to my parents. Yeah, yeah, okay, you might have been, you might have ordered Sweden to Norway. Uh, you know, just to, well. yeah, yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's see. Fall of 1902, and oh yeah, uh, there it yeah. is. <laughs> there it is, <laughs> the convoy of the English army over the French fleet in the North Sea into Holland with support from Belgium. Because that is just what you do in this position, right? What else would you do? Perfectly um, logical. Um, cool. And they both get a build. France takes Portugal. England takes Holland. Everybody's happy. But it, but England loses Norway, so they don't get a build, yeah? Uh, thank yeah. you. England does not get a build. Uh, Germany is pulling out his hair and saying, <laughs> why, oh, why did I get this draw? Um, oh, poor Jonathan Frank. But Germany... It, but Germany- Germany's not losing a dot here. I mean, this is for all of the, you know, all of the fireworks we're seeing from this EF. Uh, they actually, you know, haven't taken any of Germany's dots yet. And Germany is, um, uh, Germany's actually uh, it's very crackable here now, especially with the fleet and Skagerrak. So yeah, maybe I mean, it's just a- that's partly true, Brandon. I mean, I would consider Holland to be a German dot, even though in this case it wasn't taken. So I would say that that is progress, that they're in Holland. They got armies in Belgium and Holland. Um, yeah, and, and Rory's guaranteed here. Uh, eh, they'll have to, no, that's actually not 100%. They'll have to, it would, Holland would have to be the mover. But anyway, um, and then uh, what about the East? Uh, well, Siobhan. Oh, go ahead, Siobhan. Oh, um, the East is a whole lot of red arrows and attempted long convoy by the Italian. And the only person who gains anything out of it is the Austrian when Serbia goes to Bulgaria. All right, and uh, let us uh, let's push ahead and check out the builds here. Uh, we see Morgante putting down the Northern Fleet. Always fun to see. We see uh, France putting down a Southern Fleet now. So now telegraphing a possible uh, a possible Southern move, and Austria puts down um, uh, another army. So uh, so quick reset here. Who's uh, who would you want to be if you had to pick one of these? Uh, Adam, start with you. Wow. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't. Oh, boy. You know, <laughs> it's it's really early to say. I mean, there's a lot of dynamics here. I mean, I think the Austrian position's not bad. The Russian position, you know, has potential, though. I'm not really happy about this EF thing going on if I'm Russia. Um, I think St. Pete fleet was likely the right build there. Um, but I, I don't know that it's going to go that well in the long run for them. Um, so I'm not so sure. I mean, I think the EF could be okay. I think Austria could be okay. Italy could be okay. I mean, <laughs> All right. You're not being you're your uh, It's, it's right. early. I, I don't know. Okay. That, I mean, that's a fair answer as well. Uh, Siobhan, what about you? Um, if I'm looking to do well on the board, I'd probably want to step in as Austria. Um, I think it's the most stable. Um, but if I'm looking to have fun and don't care much about tournament results, no matter what position I pick up, um, E or F, it's just, it's too, it's too fun. <laughs> like, Oh, I love this. Uh, yeah. England sitting there with a build, um, but with not, you know, no, nothing else in the home centers and a French fleet in North and really happy about it. <laughs> oh, and so happy about it. All right. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That was after the builds right england didn't uh, england didn't huh. actually pick one up that's right that's right that's right we went through that okay so um so spring of 1903 um uh, we are back to siobhan being primary tell us about it okay um i'm looking around the lowlands and trying to figure out what all those tiny little arrows mean which is that england and france have managed to pop Ruhr, who gets displaced um failed to go to holland they also managed to pop denmark and uh, Germany, you were just having such a frustrating time right now. Um, Austria and Russia do a little dancing. Austria gets pushed out of Galicia um, and some shifting of the fleets down in the southeast. Adam, anything I missed? No, I think I think that's a good, a good analysis. I mean, I guess one thing I would point out is that um, Germany and uh, Russia, who should be coordinating here and it's not that they're not they're they're failing to coordinate but they're they're not doing much and you know they chose to make a static defense rather than an active Mm -hmm. defense um and again it's it's not as it's not so much of that being right or wrong but often in positions like these a more dynamic uh defense 
as in trying to move units around, such as, for example, trying to piff the English fleet in Skagerrak or something along those lines might have put them in a better position in the fall. And especially yeah. with uh, with EF being so deeply entwined, um, you, you, know, you know they're working together. You know France is yeah. not going to London or something like that. There's no way, right? And yeah. so, yeah. yeah. And you're and you have to know if you are. You have to anticipate if you're Russia that you're next. Um, and uh, and so you need to stand with Germany here. And this is a very conservative defense um, on Morgante's part, which says I care about mine and. Uh, uh, possibly a bit short-sighted for the future. Okay, let's push ahead here. Fall of 1903 coming up. And uh, Siobhan, tell us about it. Um, we see some more movement between the French and English units. They also take Kiel. Um, they make a try for Munich, which doesn't work because Austria supports Munich, which I think is the right call at this moment. You don't want EF rolling as fast as they are. And you, so you do what you can to support it. Um, meanwhile, Austria continues to march into Turkey. And Morgante supports everything um, but austria does lose um to the dotting italian uh in greece <laughs> possibly possibly arranged uh given yeah. that uh yeah that the italian helped with Khan, but mm -hmm. yeah, maybe not we'll see uh adam what else stands out to you you know, again, um, this double support of Norway in the north. Now there's nothing even in the North Sea, so there's only two on Norway. So you have the opportunity to either move St. Petersburg up to the Barents Sea huh? or to move Norway back to Finland and move St. Petersburg out to Norway to get that fleet out in Norway. Um, so I, I think it's disappointing that, again, you know, he chose to go for such a passive defense when really there's an opportunity here to shuffle some yeah. units and get them into a better position, you know, a stronger position where it just makes more of a guessing game for England right here. There's, there's very little to guess about because that fleet is holed up in St. Petersburg and that army is holed up in Norway. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we're going to end up uh, by the end of this game, if we're going to see that French fleet, like South coast, St. Petersburg or something, um, you know, do. Just something, something crazy just to show, you know, that they can do it. Uh, and why not? Okay, let's, uh, uh, sh let's see. Let's uh, keep going here. Then we've got um, winter builds coming up and that finds another Southern fleet. So France is really sticking with the EF and mm -hmm. uh, England uh, for their sake puts down another Northern fleet, which is actually a potentially a longer term issue for the EF. Um, you might you might have thought that would be an army headed for the uh, for the Russian centers, yeah. I'm super disappointed that we didn't see French fleet Brest and English fleet Liverpool, so the French fleet could go north and the English fleet could go south. <laughs> that would have been amazing. You know, um, that that would have been appropriate for this game. Um, yeah, I mean, you don't really necessarily need another fleet here. On the other hand. Um, it gives you some flexibility. The reality is you probably don't need to be in Helgoland anymore, so that can go out to the North Sea, and then you can try to do some kind of convoy nonsense. Um, subsequently, uh, conversely, Denmark, you know, you can try to get Denmark into Baltic, have England follow into Denmark, you know, give France a dot from somewhere else. So, you know, th there's reasons to have that extra fleet, I guess. But yeah, I, I agree with you, Brandon. I think an army is probably more solid here. All right. Elsewhere, we see Turkey making, uh, you know, making the final, pulling the final straws out of the mattress, pulling out Syria and uh, Italy uh, puts on fleet Naples. All right. Spring 1904, we've got uh, Adam leading off. Tell us about it. I, I'm not sure whether England legitimately thought Germany was going to convoy his fleet to Livonia, though that would have been hysterically funny if he had. That would have been uh, hilarious. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know they they put they put France into Sweden, which makes sense. That was um, that was easy to force, um, and then everything just kind of chugs along. I think I mean it looks like he expected that he was going to get uh, to Livonia. I mean there's no loss by <laughs> by giving it a shot, I guess. Um, what else do we see? Turkey is um, done. Thank you, Dave Roberts. Um, mm -hmm. It was not much you probably could have done in this game. So, um, you know, what, what, what way to fight it out. Um, and, and now we've got this kind of AIR against EF, and we will see if it locks down. I don't see EF stabbing each other just by the way they're playing. Um, 
but the eastern side may be less stable. We'll we'll have to kind of keep an eye on that. How did do you guys remember how West did in the first round? I think he ended up with a second place, right? I think he had a solid second yeah. place. Yeah, that's right. He stabbed. He was the Germany that went for the stab against England and right. ended up recovering and finishing a 10-9 second. Uh so he's it with a board top, he's very much in contention for the for the, the tournament championship. So uh so he's gonna be hungry. Morgante is gonna be hungry. Uh love that they have their backs against each other right now, you know? Uh yeah. Neither of them can win if the other one uh tops the board. Exactly. And the only other thing I'd add here is that we're seeing the results of Morgante's static defense earlier, yeah. where if he'd been more active previously, he could have kept England guessing, had something in the Barons, had a fleet in Norway, all sorts of options that would have just been more fluid in this moment. And might have been the one thing that could have created some dissension in the EF, right, is if, uh, is if it just stops working. You know, if they stop mm -hmm. making progress, but it does feel like, you know, they're they're just they're two like, you know, buds uh, drinking beers and like, uh, you know, slapping each other on the back. And as long as that's fun, like it'll keep going. Yeah. All right. Let's let's keep going ourselves. Fall of 1904. And uh, here, uh, I believe, Adam, you are still the primary. Tell us about it. Yeah, I mean, the coordination continues and, the, and, and now they force Norway, which was, I think, pretty much a guarantee um you know france gets the build from belgium that's that's agreed upon that's not a you know that's not a dotting situation there um and and france continues to uh to advance in italy uh italy makes the wise choice to convoy tunis back um i i would not be shocked to see austria make a move on italy at some point in the near future um just because they probably can um, and, um, but especially if they feel like they can do it without, uh, throwing things out to France, but that, that may be more challenging actually, um, because of the fleet situation. Austria giving a dot here to Russia is interesting. Siobhan, what do you make of that? Yeah, I was just looking at all of the dot swapping that seems to be going on this turn. And that was exactly the one I was looking at. I oh, huh. don't love it. It's a little um, curious. Russia's got to build. Oh no, I see. Russia's got to build. Keeps, but yeah, Russia loses two in Scandinavia, picks up Ankara and Bulgaria to stay even. So we'll get a rebuild here uh, because uh, of the PIF, correct? And uh, you would have to expect that rebuild to come in Saint Petersburg. Saint Petersburg. Yeah, I'm a little. I'm a little less enamored of that convoy from Tunis to Tuscany here, especially given that. Uh, that Italy was going to get a build. Um, it's, uh, you know, Italy needs to get not only a unit into Tunis, but also another unit in the Ionian Sea. So I think given that he was getting the build here, he might have been better off uh, just keeping that that unit there and and then building in Rome. Um, you can still build the fleet in Rome, but now you've got, you know, now you've got some protection back there. The army in Tuscany mm -hmm. is I, I don't know. I mean, I, I see your point. I mean, you're going to at some point, France will get another fleet in North Africa and then you're going to have a problem in Tunis. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. But there's, you know, there's lots of dancing to do between now and then. So and France has the uh, has to make a decision here whether to build that fleet in Marseille and try to shuffle down or to build the fleet in Brest and, you know, do something else while it takes a full year to get down there. Uh, the answer is fleet Brest. That does seem the more straightforward option. So that's the right call. Not, not surprising. I agree. Elsewhere, we've got a uh, fleet in Rome. Interesting. Could have made a good argument here for, I'm sorry, fleet in Naples. Could have made a good argument here for fleet Rome. Um, and uh, Austria gives up on the fleet. Probably uh, interesting, you know, uh, interesting longer term consequences of that. Um, could have made an argument. Uh, Austria could have made the argument that that fleet was just as good as an Italian one and, and held on to it. But uh in any case, uh, we do have a fleet north coast from Saint Peter uh, in from Russia and Saint Petersburg, and mm -hmm. uh, now we get an army from England, uh, which is good, right? Another fleet would definitely would have been too constrictive. Absolutely. All right, let's uh, let's push ahead and spring of nineteen oh five, and we go back to Siobhan for primary analysis. Tell us about it. All right, lots of black arrows. Um, Brest, as expected, moving over to MAO so it can make a push down to NAF next turn. 
Um, some attempts to move into Berlin, which are unsuccessful, but the French and English fleets continue to move. Um, the army does nothing in favor of pushing north to Helgoland, which I'm not Helgoland's sure interesting, huh? Yeah. I see the purpose of in this moment. Yeah. Um, it Russia decides to cover Warsaw, go to Ukraine. Okay, I mean, takes Khan from the Austrian, but the Austrian takes Bull from the Russian. It's all just a big dipsy doodle switcheroo. Yeah, you got to figure that's all planned. It's interesting that Bulgaria waited to be dislodged rather than simply uh, retreated to Romania here. Might it yeah. maybe that maybe that was a way of you know enforcing the contract so that. He could get I mean, Constantinople. Yeah, I don't know. Um, the pressure to Warsaw, covering Warsaw is really <sighs> curious to me. Yeah, and Vienna to Budapest. Yeah. So, Adam, uh, what, what, uh, what? Yeah, what do you make of the whole situation here? We've got the EF lined up against a, an a AIR. Uh, Maybe. Yeah. Are these are these signs of worry from uh, inside the AR? Is that what that looks like to you, or or something else? Well, I, I, you know, I think, I think what I said earlier, I think EF is solid and I would be shocked if either one stabs the other at all in this game. I think they're going to care bear their way through it and, and power to them for, for making the decision to do that. Um, but I also said earlier that I thought the AIR might be less stable. And I think that we're seeing signs of that right here. Um, clearly Russia doesn't make moves like this unless they are paranoid about something happening. Um, different than, than what they're hoping for. And, um, you know, the Vienna to Budapest, I mean, that's completely in the wrong direction of where it should be going. If anything, they should be following up into Tyrolia or something along those lines. Um, you know, I, you know, we're not privy to the conversations. I don't know if this um, Bulgaria thing was arranged or not. Um, but even if it was, you know, the Budapest thing really looks <laughs> sketchy to me, and does. Warsaw looks sketchy to me. And we do have that we do have the first sign of potential trouble in the in the EF which is north of Helgoland but it's hard to see, other than being not useful against um against Russia it's not really useful against France either so I mean you didn't um, go to the channel right I mean you didn't right, go to exactly well, Yeah if anything it actually uh you know it sequesters the fleet a little bit so uh it's it's just uh, it just looks strange. Okay, let's uh, move on to fall 1905 and uh, let us stay with you, Siobhan, as primary. Tell us what you see. Um, it jumps out to me immediately. I love the convoy of Kiel to Prussia. <laughs> um, just, sure, fleet in Berlin, you can sit there. I'm just going to leapfrog right over you. That's always fun. Move your units as quickly as possible and get around the other side. Um, other than and, and, that, and now we now we see the utility of going to Helgoland, actually, is that it... it uh, it ensures yeah. the covering of, of Kiel. So, okay, I suppose that was useful. I never thought the Helgoland was an issue for the French player. I just thought it was losing them some momentum because, I mean, that, that army and Eddie just sits there again. I, I would argue that they don't need the fleet in Helgoland because Rohr can do the same thing. They're not getting Munich in this position. So, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I mean, it allows them to still put two on Munich, but I, I don't know that it was necessary. I would have probably preferred to see them try to get that army into Norway so that it could go to Finland and then do that whole kind of thing. Yep. All right. But let's talk about what happens uh, in the South, because uh, that is some interesting uh, dipsy doodle with a net. I think there's a net effect here. Yeah. Um, so the net effect winds up. Austria. Italy. Well, Italy up for sure. Austria even and Russia, Russia down. Russia even. No, Russia's down, I believe. Russia's Russia down. Go, right? Wait, then who goes down? Russia. Wait, oh yeah. Russia down, Italy up. Yeah. Yeah, my math is right. Okay. Um <laughs> like what's going on? I mean, that's what I want to know. Why? Right? I, I don't think anyone knows what's going on. Like, Maybe this is tournament, tournament, tournament dynamics uh, imposing themselves. You know, you've got yeah. players who have a chance of winning the tournament who are trying to put themselves in position, however weak their chances are of doing mm -hmm. that. Um, Natty Schaefer, did he have a, a good first round? Can't remember that. I don't recall. Yeah, this is when it'd be useful to be able to pull that up. 
uh, we should get a coder on that. Maybe, uh, maybe in the future. Okay, let's uh, let's see what happens with the builds. Uh, so you're right. So we we know that Morgante and Wes are both in contention to win the tournament, and yet it is uh, neither of them who benefits from this dipsy doodle. It is Natty Shaver. Natty does. Uh, Natty answers the call by putting down an army in Venice, which uh, presumably doesn't bode well for Austria, but it also can be used against uh, France for defense. So uh, elsewhere, we see. Um, uh, we see Russia giving up uh, some northern uh, exposure. And so France and England had nothing to uh, to put down here. Yep, they had no builds in pocket and didn't gain any, any units. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let me see where this game is. And then we can... Uh, you know, I, would, I would argue here that you actually really did want to give... I mean, this, this is so problematic. What's going on? What really should have happened is that the Austrian should have should be in Tyrolia now, and that um, the the Italian should have gotten that Tyrolian army down into Venice, so that they could have built yet an, built another fleet. I mean, you do want Italy to get a build here, but I think this is sort of a guessing game, and you needed something in the Ionian to support Tunis with yep. Rome supporting Tyrrhenian Sea, and then you have a line, um, and then all this kind of you know. Uh, dipsy doodle as you call it uh it, it really just guarantees that at some point uh france is going to plow through when they guess correctly yeah that's yeah, a really nice point they had a shot here to um to to make the line and they and mm -hmm. they passed it up I mean, Aegean goes to ionian right i mean if Aegean yep. goes to the ionian here they got the line uh yeah. and Tyro so tyrolia did go down but the reality is if 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 um Austria had been in Vienna or Trieste to be able to support that move instead, or had been in position to follow up subsequently, um, you know, the whole thing would be locked at this stage. Yep. Uh, but instead, there are people who want to win the tournament. So <laughs> go figure. Yeah. All right. So this game, uh, uh, we're, uh, we're a year or two behind where this game is right now. I think, um, let me actually, let me do a quick survey here. Um, Cause we've, uh, we've been a little bit, uh, uh, efficient and uh we've caught up to a lot of these games uh we do actually have a game to go back to let's go back to game number one here um we're gonna have to bring brian pravel back on the line to do this brian are you uh hanging out uh don't see brian pravel so need a little brian pravel back in the studio brian if you're listening <laughs> all right let me take check on it. take it away you know, brandon i think i'm gonna do it i think i'm gonna be brian pravel for a little bit um, ah, you know what? I'm sorry, actually. Um, I would like us to go back to board four and okay. uh, bring Mario back on back into the studio here. Uh, and so Siobhan, we'll come back to you. So don't go too far. Sounds like a plan. But. All right. Uh, and then Mario, Mario, welcome back to the stream. Uh, are you you are muted? I'm going to unmute. You can't. Un you have to un unmute yourself. Well, come back now. Yes, we now we can hear you. All right, welcome back. Did you have a good nap? A nap? No, I was watching the stream. So yeah, had a... How did you? Yeah. Uh, all right, so you were watching this game, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, any quick thoughts on this game? Then what? Uh, who who you'd want to be? Or uh, tell what about the EF here? The way that E and F have worked together so solidly in this game. Yeah, I mean it's fantastic. Well, uh, George. Oh, Jorge, I don't know how you pronounce George, it. He is George. He is George, actually. Okay, so he's, he's, he chose George. Okay, and Maxim uh, did together. I, I think, yeah, George, he's, um, he's also a blogger, and uh, he's also organizer of a tournament. So I know that he likes to do funny things, and we see that playing out here. So, yeah, this is completely George style. Um, it's, it's fun, is it's fun. Is it good diplomacy, in your opinion? Uh, it's very good aliens play, and I love it that you can you know, sometimes care bears are uh, interesting to watch, especially in the, the the first stages. Not so much in the later stages. <laughs> yeah, the question is: Is it is it real care bear play? You know, does one of them have their sights set on uh, on the board top alone, or are they happy just to carry it through? Um, uh, okay, so. Uh, Let's uh, let's dive back in here. Spring 1906. Uh, Siobhan will have you be the primary and uh, let us uh, tell us what happens here. 
Oof. Okay, um, I'm looking to the EF first, and what happened around Berlin? Kiel so, Kiel is supported into Berlin yes, with okay. uh, from Baltic and Prussia. Baltic, for uh, for that matter, is supported by Sweden, <laughs> just <laughs> in mean, case Germany and Russia. Just completely unholy. Um, so Germany loses his last two dots to France and England in Berlin and Munich. Um, Meanwhile, France just pulls back from the Italian border, uh, loses Western Med, though. Taking Tunis is nice, but not sure I love. But we do have the English fleet popping around to now to defend MAO, so maybe we're okay. Um, meanwhile, in the east, I believe that one black arrow says that Russia gets into Romania. That is the case. Uh, okay. Triple support, and uh, it looks like... So Romania went to Bulgaria with the support of Khan and Budapest and Serbia supported uh, uh, Budapest supported Serbia into Romania. So Wait, no, no, no. What did Khan... Romania went to Bulgaria with support of Khan. Yep. Bul went to Rum with support of Ukraine and Sev. Right, Rum so... didn't move. Uh, and no. Austria tried to take Romania by himself. No, Rum did go to Bulgaria here. It did? Yeah, so this was this was three three Russian against two okay. uh, Austro Italian. Sorry, there's too many dots and arrows for me. To... Yeah, yeah, it's fine. This was a guess, by the way. So it had um, had Austria and Italy had Austria triple support, a uh, double supported Romania, which then supported Khan into Bulgaria. Then uh, then they would have succeeded, and Bulgaria would have been uh, displaced into black. Okay, um, so uh, Adam, what uh, anything worth further discussion here? So do you know what really helps get English French armies across the middle of the board? Austrian Russian fighting. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Nothing helps it like that, right? I mean, this is where we're going here. Um, this could be ugly really fast um, if Russia and Austria don't figure something out. This could get really ugly really fast. Um, you know, the, the situation in the South was a tactical mess. Um, the outcome is an awkward position, but what it comes down to is France is in a dot they can hold. They can cover Spain. This is a win for France. Mm -hmm. 100%. And especially with, you know, their friend, the English coming down to, you know, to protect mid-Atlantic, right? That's kind of the big weak spot all of a sudden, and, yep. uh, and they just don't have to worry about it. So, uh, I, you know, the, uh, the underlying question for the rest of this tournament is uh do england and france uh do either one of them get any funny ideas and uh no. there's zero indication whatsoever all right we do have some suggestions for the ef alliance yes and uh, i already have a favorite me too actually so uh uh but so just a really quick before we go through them we'll, we'll do a little bit more game before we go through them the uh the entente is the traditional name for it and i, I just find that boring it's not scary at all uh, mm -hmm. like the juggernaut it doesn't make you feel like you're about to be overrun so all right why don't we uh why don't we why don't we, i'll hold that off then until we go a little further in the game uh fall of 1906 siobhan tell us what happens there is quite a lot going on in the east okay yeah let's start over there so um again austria and russia fighting they're going to continue that fine but um you're welcome france um so austria takes warsaw with english help and takes Bulgaria with Italian help, loses Vienna for the effort um, because the German is just trying to hold on to any center he can find. And respect for that, John Frank. Um, <laughs> that is really I, fun. That is really fun. I, you might as well wander around the board. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, some repositioning of French units to protect Spain. Fine. Um, and as expected, England protected Mao for france all right adam any uh any additions no i mean the thing that's most curious to me is england supporting the austrians into russia but i think that that's probably just making sure that this chaos continues as long as you know somebody's taking a dot off of somebody else it's uh her, ma making it less likely that they're going to go back to working together which makes it more likely that ef can just plow across the middle so uh i, I get it and i think it's probably a sensible choice Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, really, really strategically clever, I think, yeah. shrewd. Uh, the net effect here is that um, Russia is going to lose a dot and Austria would have built were it not for that pesky German. 
Is, is uh, it only one dot? Isn't it Bulgaria? Russia loses two. Well, no, Russia picks up Romania here. So. Oh, okay. Just, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. correct. So, okay. And yes. so, and the, and and Austria picks up two and loses two. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the uh, oh, the e I want to say I want to say my favorite now for the EF. <laughs> so yeah, let's do it. In, just do it. Yeah, 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 let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So the uh, the uh, the candidates so far, uh, Farron Jane offered the Union. Ariel Mendez Pinate offered the Armada. Uh, and then also the allies. Uh, you, uh, you should have stopped while you were ahead, Ariel. Uh, Armada is much better than the allies. Ben Kelman offers the Leviathan, a big monster, more sea-based. And uh, that's it for the for the suggestions. I think Siobhan and I are on the same page here. So I'm going to go to you, Adam. Which one uh, Which one of those do you like? Uh, I think we can do better. Yeah? Oh, okay. Siobhan? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I, I'm on board with, uh, the Leviathan. Um, someone in another thread suggests the Kraken, <laughs> um, release the Kraken as it were. Um, no, I like the Leviathan. It has a really good feel to it. The big mm -hmm. monster, more sea based. You, you get way more fleets from England and France and that Alliance than you do almost any other. And it sounds big, right? Yeah. Just like juggernaut, like Leviathan. I mean, can I just say right here, the Leviathan picked up three dots this year. <laughs> Adam is not convinced. Okay, we'll have to work on that. Right. Adam, go grab another beer. We'll convince you by the time you're back. Is it is it the way I say it? Should I say it? The it might the be Leviathan. Right. All right. We need to, you know, we need to get David Hood on here to give that to give us that growl and go, Leviathan. There we go. All okay, right. next uh, DBN news drop. That was a little. That was a little more demonic than. <laughs> than, than a little more more. I love Jason Massbaum dropping back into the comments to ask, "What is happening on this board?" <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's see. We've got uh, winter nineteen oh six. Let's see what the Leviathan drops. <laughs> it is an a fleet in Edinburgh, which is going. It's going north to uh, the pole where the secret fortress is in order to. Uh, make the uh, required donations to the god. I, I should say that the Leviathan, is, the Leviathan is unbalanced here. Uh, Maxim's at nine, and George is at eight. Mm -hmm. um, what are they going to do? I don't know. George puts down a fleet: Brest, Army, Paris, and uh, the Austrian uh, gets a rebuild here. Must have been. Um, I, I, yeah. I just want to say that it is distinctly unfair that this game is going to end in a year. I know. It I is know. so unfair because I, there is just yeah. so much awesomeness to happen on this board. I <laughs> wanted to go for like five more hours. Well, it's, yeah, but the, the, but now we get back to like a traditional diplomacy problem, which is um, that an alliance, uh, an alliance can only go so far before it uh, suffers under the weight of its own success. I, there, I there don't are, agree in this situation. This this alliance has a long way to go. They can go I, right through the middle of the board. I mean, there's dots for everybody here. I I agree. Right. So with 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 carnage scoring and and with the way that the situ with the way that the uh, the tournament is set up and these players are existing within the larger framework of the tournament. The uh, that the breaking point will come when one of them has an opportunity to go for a solo. The potential breaking point. There really is no significant breaking point before then. Other scoring systems will uh, will uh, allow for uh, a stress point. I should say not breaking point. A stress point a lot sooner. Um, but in this case, there could be there would be a point at which one of them would have a solo a clear solo path, and they would have to deliberately not take it in order to get say a seventeen seventeen uh, center result. But we're not going to get there because this game's going to end uh, possibly this turn. Uh, no. All right. We do get a turn. So spring 1907. Uh, Adam, tell us about it. Yeah. So Russia retakes Warsaw. Um, England is advancing to Silesia. I mean, there's not a lot going on other than the dance around Austria and Russia right now. So, um, uh, you know, Russia does pull down into Armenia, which is kind of interesting. It's actually surprising that Italy hasn't taken Ankara yet. Uh, now they're not going to get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, they're going to have to take a little bit of a guess now um, since Russia's in Armenia and Black Sea. <laughs> Oh, right to Black Sea. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's possible that, that they'll just make a play back to Romania, but that certainly doesn't look like that's the plan right now. Um, but yeah, not not a huge amount of progress, but it's just you know, it's just positioning at this point, and and 
it, it's a grind and you just don't have time to grind because of the time limit. What do you guys remember uh, what year it was that I suggested we may see uh, fleet south, a French fleet on the south coast of uh, there it is. Yeah. It's exactly what I was going to point out. It was like in 02 or something. Yeah. Um, it was very early and you got your wish. They, right. they, they were listening, man. They were listening. <laughs> All right. Let's. Uh... <laughs> oh, Albania. And they actually convoy Spain to Albania in the <laughs> chaos of all of that. <laughs> Chef's kiss. Love it. 100% uh, here for that. And uh, yeah, uh, there's, there's one other point of note here. Um, and the convoy uh, to Belgium. I actually think the. Um, Wait, Germany stays alive. Yeah, that was what I was seeing. Um, but actually that convoy to Belgium, uh, that actually changes the board top, doesn't it? Uh -huh. no, Fran France took one. It's ties. They're going to be tied because France, oh, France took same eight. Eight. Yeah. It makes sure that it makes them tied on the board. Top. France was nine, eight, but, uh, yeah. but France needed two, didn't they? No, they, they took St. Pete and they lost Belgium. So they're still oh, so they're even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Plus one. So this oh, thank is you. the, um, neither of us is going to win this tournament. Let's end it on this unholy yeah. alliance as we began. As and they should. As they should. It's fitting. It's fitting. It made sense. And, uh, you know, good job, guys. I, <laughs> this is the right result. What can you say? For this game, it's the right outcome. I mean, we can talk about perversions of a system and all that kind of thing. But, you know, is was there any other correct outcome for this game other than this? Once you've done this, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> this moment, like, you flipped to this reveal, and all three of us were just like, what? Yeah. Yeah, once you've done this, there is only one outcome of the game, and that's the Leviathan uh, <laughs> dominates the board. Split board top, two halves, one Leviathan, game over. So All many right, good uh, games tonight. So many good games. What a what a pleasure. <laughs>